Hydro 2A uh, evaporator system. This deposition system is capable of handling two 1 kVA filaments and one 2 kVA filament for evaporating material. Also, this system can be uh, incorporated with a mini gun. Denton DG2 mini gun power supply is here. So the minigun can also be connected to this machine. Uh, this system requires a single phase 208 volts, but only the, the chamber and the vacuum pump system, along with neutral and ground connections. Currently the system was left pumped down overnight, and uh, when it was set to pump down overnight, right now I am in 20 to minus 7 range, and it is about 5 into 10 to the negative 7 core vacuum level. Uh, this vacuum level is without connect pouring any liquid nitrogen. So pouring liquid nitrogen will help it and the, the diffusion pump uh, will pump it down to lower 10 to the minus 7 range core. I'm going to show uh, that the the filament heaters are working. I have uh, three filaments installed. So let me start with a, a simple uh, coil heater filament. I'm going to start it now. And I have a, a shutter here in order to prevent from the user looking at the bright filament so, so right now the current is not even closer to 10 amperes the filament is already bright so that's one filament there and also there is a sample rotating motor on the top of the system and And the sample holder is installed. Let me show the sample holder rotation. <clears throat> I'm going to turn this filament off and go to the second one. The second one is a higher ampere rate but still 1 kVA source. I'm going to turn it on. And this current is slightly above 60 amperes already and the filament is not even just started to heat up. So the, there are transformers in order to power up these filaments the transformers could be rewired for a selected voltage and current and we make sure that every time you are turning off a filament or the heater bolt you have to reduce the, the filament adjust knob to all the way to zero and that's that's almost 80 amps and and I can I'm still not bright enough so we can go higher so the meter can be selected for 0 to 100 amperes or 0 to 500 amperes you can select either range uh, depending on the selected transformer so I'm selecting here the 2 kVA transformer I'm going to zero to 500 amperes range. So I'm going to start this. I'm going slowly. So initially, when you see the current go up, you have to wait and increase the heat slowly. So that's the third one. And this third one, the electrodes 
feed through so water cool I'm going to show it on the back side so that's the so you can see while the filament is hot the vacuum level is still in 7 range and uh, when we start to actually evaporate the material the vacuum will go to the lower range uh, you should make sure that the vacuum uh, doesn't go into uh, below 10 to the minus 5 range and if it starts to do that then you have to reduce the current and first make sure the, the material is properly preheated slowly at lower current and then cranked up to melt. It depends on the material, what current you are operating and also which transformer to select is purely dependent on the filament or the bolt that is installed in the chamber. The chamber water lines are, are connected and they are available and in case at any point of time that the chamber walls get heated up, uh, it is always advised to run water lines through this at room temperature, preferably around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. Also there are additional ports to connect an external gauge in order to verify the existing cold cathode gauge. The system can be operated in auto pump mode and auto vent mode only when the whole system is fully functional and that is the mechanical pump is working and the diffusion pump is already turned on several hours. So right now if I switch it to auto pump <clears throat> the these switches are no longer operable the backing valve the high vacuum valve uh, and the roughing valve now the sequencer starts to <clears throat> the sequencer starts to pump down the chamber and uh, open the high vacuum valve once the the low vacuum uh, reading on the chamber is below 100 millivolts. Uh, we will include a original manual, uh, either a hard copy or an on the DVD, uh, which explains the operation of the machine in detail. Now I'm going to turn off the cold cathode gauge and vent the chamber. I'm going to show the inside of the system. It's always when there is some material in the in the thermal or the e beam evaporator, uh, the pockets and bolts. It's always recommended to let the system cool down for for at least 10 to 15 minutes. And then we can go to auto vent. So in this mode. <coughs> All the valves will be closed sequentially, the high vacuum valve will be closed, and the vacuum valve will be turned on in auto mode. <coughs> and then, once the chamber is at atmospheric pressure, the door can be open. At this point, all the valves are closed. Light indicates that the vent valve is open. So the sample holder can be tilted and rotated so that you get a better uniformity by rotating the sample. And this is a crystal monitor uh, detectors 
pistol is installed here. So these are the low current, the medium current and the high current boats here. And by using uh, shields like this, the material cross contamination can be eliminated. Also right now, I have, uh, in order to demonstrate all the pocket flowing, I have removed the shutter. And this shutter, once it is installed, it will prevent from material deposition on the crystal or during the preheat state. <coughs> so at any point of time, care should be taken that the electrodes are not touching with the other pair of electrodes. That is very important. And all these uh, feed throughs are currently isolated from the ground and they are wired directly to the power supply. Now uh, there are there's a there are additional ports through these square flanges here. Now uh, these ports are there's one on this side and one on the back side. Uh, these are used when an E-beam gun is installed. And these uh, ceramic feed throughs are for the E-beam gun electrode connections. So I'm going to turn on the automatic pump down. And the chamber pumps down to 10 to the minus 5 range under 5 minutes. The system facilities are connected over here. Uh, I have uh, water lines uh, going into the system here. Uh, they are marked and labeled. This is for the water flow switch and uh, in and out and this is for the uh, water cooling for the crystal monitor and the, the high current feed throughs. These feed throughs are water cooled. Also I have uh, connections available we're connecting it to the chamber water cooling line. So this one is the 2 kVA transformer and there are two 1 kVA transformers. So each filament is powered separately from each a different transformer. And this one is the controller module for the cold cathode sensor, the high vacuum gauge. And there's an Alcatel 2010 mechanical pump here. I have removed the, the back panel grid to show all the ports. So this is the backing valve and the roughing valve and the other valves are inside the system. The cold cathode sensor is over here. During shipping the magnets will be removed from the sensor and shipped in a separate bag. And the magnets have to be replaced on the sensor tube and uh, the high voltage and the ground connections up to be connected to the sensor and once the magnet is placed then only the the sensor will read the high vacuum. Uh, this is a uh, vent port for the mechanical pump. Uh, this system can be retrofitted using uh, sample heaters, etc. Uh, when you have a sample heater, this port can be used to power the heaters. And this is for the sample rotation motor power. And this is a feed through that goes on the square plan here when a E-beam gun is used. 